So this is the mostly completed and mostly assembled um, setup I have going for my smart door lock um, system. So it's really simple. This is just an MG995 servo uh, that is then screwed into a uh, 3D printed housing with a cover on it that sits on top of the door lock, which is then wired into an ESP8266 uh, on a breadboard and then a 3.7 volt 4400 milliamp hour uh, lithium polymer battery. Uh, and then all of this is connected to a um, USB type C charger from Adafruit or Adafruit, uh, just a JST connection out to the board, uh, battery soldered to, uh, to some pins on there and then it charges through type C on the side. Um, very roughly hot glued into a case that was 3D printed and then there are two buttons uh, on the outer shell of it for locking and unlocking the, the deadbolt. I normally, when doing stuff like this, would solder uh, cables to things. Uh, I wouldn't use the breadboard. I would just wire everything to, this, to the Arduino. Uh, but I was really lazy with this project and I have a lot of these and they're super cheap. So I figured why not just stick it down there and use it as a circuit. So uh, we'll run through this code in a second in case anybody is interested and we can kind of see all the smart functionality that's kind of programmed into it or smart by my standards. Um, but it is hooked into uh, my home assistant application running on my home server as well as Google Assistant. So if I say, hey Google, unlock the front door. We can see it unlocks the door. And if I say, hey Google, lock the front door. It will lock the deadbolt as well. So uh, I can trigger that through Google, through the app, through the Assistant, as well as through Home Assistant on my computer, phone, tablet, or anything else that Home Assistant has an app for. We can run through the code for anybody who's interested. So for anybody who has any interest, uh, I actually can walk through the code of what I wrote and we can go through some of the Home Assistant integrations that I did to make this work with my uh, my smart home and stuff. Um, but I understand this isn't for everybody, so feel free to skip you know a minute or two ahead. Starting from the bottom, uh, we have the two basic Arduino functions. Um, I'm not too well versed in them, so I'm gonna call them the only necessity ones. But we have setup, which just begins setting everything up. We attach our servo right at 1090, which um, makes it so it doesn't move at the beginning. It goes to its neutral position and we detach it so it stops taking signals. We set up the buttons for opening and closing, and then we begin our Wi-Fi network setup. And this connects to a secrets header file uh, that is excluded from my GitHub just because I don't want my Wi-Fi information out there. Um, but it's really easy to just make the file, add the, add the constants, and then you're all set. Uh, that connects to the Wi-Fi, and as long um, as long as it's not connected, we wait until it's ready. Then we establish it. Uh, I set auto reconnect to true, so when if it loses Wi-Fi connection, it will then uh, reconnect on its own. Then we set up our REST server. Um, we'll get to that next. After loop, uh, and what loop does is it just iterates through this whole function uh, the whole time that the, uh, the Arduino has power. So it's listening for the open button to be pressed and the close button to be pressed running their respective functions. Uh, if Wi-Fi is ever disconnected, and this is a big safety thing, um, if I'm out and about and, uh, and my internet goes out for whatever reason, it automatically opens the lock so that I don't get locked out um, because it's a little hard to turn the, turn the key when the servo is powered. So this makes it easier to unlock the door from the outside if I ever lose internet. Uh, with plans to add transistors so that this isn't necessary anymore, but that's down the line. Uh, and then we handle our client listening for any of the uh, any of the rest URLs that we hit. We have our uh, server set up. So basically this is listed for uh, a root or a root URL where it just says welcome. Uh, we go to the open lock, close lock, and get lock status. Endpoints, they do different things. Open lock remotely and close lock remotely do what they sound like. They... Uh, open or close the lock if it's not unlocked or locked already. Uh, and then get lock status actually returns the Boolean that we are using to track all of this, which is, is unlocked. Uh, it just returns true or false. And then that way I can see if it's open or closed or not if I'm not home. So, uh, and then open and close do what they sound like. If they're not already unlocked or locked respectively, uh, it does nothing just so that it doesn't flip the servo back into its starting position here and then go through it again, just redundancy. So uh, they initially start off with attaching the servo, getting ready to send signals to it. 
uh, and then we run through a for loop, which goes from the zero degrees to, in this case, 155, and that varies per uh, per door to door. Like every deadbolt is going to be different. So mine is 155 degrees to unlock, and 155 degrees in the other way to lock it. It just takes testing on your your door if you ever want to copy this code. But it iterates through a for loop, writing each position with a uh, 15 millisecond delay between each. Uh, until it finishes the for loop and then it's unlocked, we detach and then set unlock the true or false. Uh, and then the rest of these are different um, settings for the, the pins that everything is attached to on the Arduino, uh, the name of the servo. Uh, and then this is all internet related stuff and the it's important for the Arduino to have a static IP on your local network so that if Home Assistant or Google Assistant or whatever need to interact with it, it's not gonna eventually not be able to communicate with it because your IP address has changed. So I set a static IP address, in this case, just the 192.168.0.177, and that way it's always available. So what we do to get this integrated with different home assistants is through Home Assistant. <laughs> uh, in this case, we have a few automations and stuff that hit rest commands and stuff that then get used by buttons and so on and so forth. So uh, I can show you this. <clears throat> So I can show you my uh, my configuration.yaml for Home Assistant. This is your basic configuration.yaml for the overarching setup of, of Home Assistant. So there's all the default stuff that was in here already. Uh, some of this was added when I did uh, sign up for Google uh, Home Assistant Cloud, which is like five bucks a month service where you get cloud access to your home server without having to set up a bunch of stuff. And it gives you some, some uh, easier uh, setups for things like Google Assistant and Alexa and whatnot. So we have our REST command here and a sensor. Uh, the REST commands are going to call um, our endpoints for open lock and close lock. They use get methods, not, not posts or puts or anything. Uh, one to open, one to close is hitting their different endpoints. And then we have a sensor that is using the REST command platform uh, that hits the get lock status with a get. Uh, and then I can use that to determine whether or not this is opened or closed. So in order to make use of these REST commands, there's two different ways I'm doing it. Uh, for Home Assistant itself, I have um, automation set up. So there's a lock deadbolt and unlock deadbolt, and I have two here for iOS so I can trigger them from my Apple Watch in case I want to use that or use my phone. So uh, inside of these is really basic stuff. It's just the name. There's no conditions or triggers because all we're doing is an action. Uh, we're calling the service and we're calling our REST command for closed door lock or open door lock for whatever we want to do. So that triggers that. The iOS ones are identical. It's just their triggers are whether or not they come from an iOS action uh, under a specific name, in this case, unlock front door, or I think it's just lock front door. So uh, different things to do the same action. In this case, these call a script, which is what we're getting to next. So in order for uh, iOS and Google Assistant, and in this case, with Alexa, I believe, to trigger these, they can't call automations directly they have to call scripts. Uh, and the scripts are basically the identical to the automations. The only difference is that they call uh, they call the service. There's no underlying conditions or triggers. It's just the script does this one thing. So Google Assistant has access to these two for locking and unlocking. So if I trigger Google Assistant and say, unlock the front door, lock the front door, it'll call these scripts, which then triggers Home Assistant to send the rest command, which triggers the servo to open or close the deadbolt. So uh, all of that then combines into the UI portion, which is, again, I'm not great at Home Assistant yet, so I just went with what seemed logical. Uh, this is a vertical stack, this whole thing. Uh, it has a vertical stack of a glance and a horizontal stack of two buttons. So the glance is just um, the deadbolt status. It just hits that get lock status endpoint. Uh, it returns yes or no, whether or not it's true or false. Um, it takes a few minutes to update sometimes. Sometimes it updates in a couple seconds. It's um, home assistant settings I think I need to tinker with, but no worries at all. So uh, the next one is in the buttons. These are just buttons uh, that trigger different uh, the different rest commands or uh, automations here. So if I click one from either the home assistant app or here on my computer, uh, it'll trigger the scripts and automations to ping uh, the open or close endpoints to turn the lock. So. And then all that combines into one nifty little um, square on my UI that I can trigger from, from essentially anywhere. So let's go do a really quick demo of the uh, mount 
the setup that's now attached to my door, and then we can we can end this video. So this is the uh, housings and stuff all attached to the door. These are just attached with command strips along the rim of the cup and then on the back of the box. Um, they don't look pretty. Uh, I wasn't really too focused on design of how it looked when it was on the door. I just kind of wanted to have something that was there. Uh, but we have the, uh, I don't really know what to call this, the deadbolt cover uh, that the servo is screwed into that then is attached to the deadbolt that turns when that's triggered. Uh, and then a housing box that has the battery with buttons and the wires attached to the servo and then a USB charging port on the side and a really bad glue job. Uh, so right now it's locked because I'm home. Um, press unlock and it locks. It opens, press lock. It'll lock. We can kind of see the deadbolt through there. Uh, and then I can do things like from my Apple Watch or iOS or Google Assistant, I can open it. So if I say, hey, Google, it'll open again. If I say, hey, Google, lock the front door. It's a little slow on that one, but it's uh, not too bad. So that's the demo of this. All of this is available on a GitHub that I can link in the description under uh, one of my repositories in case anybody has interest in, uh, in duplicating it. Uh, and I might have an update down the line, we'll see. Uh, I wanted to attach a servo to this so that it'll open the door handle for me, uh, but because I can't, I can't unlock it. Thank you for watching. I hope somebody enjoyed it and I hope it was kind of a bit of a learning experience because I learned a lot doing all of this. So thank you uh, and I'll see you next time.